So one of the advantages, by the way, of being in a mission like this and being on the outside of the train is you don't have to hear this sound. Hello everybody, welcome back to Train Sim World, where we are playing U876-C in Sandpatch Grade, the coal mission. Uh, there's four of these missions, and this happened to be part three of the four missions. Our goal in this mission, if we look at our timetable here, is to uncouple the 50 vehicles we got behind us. Let's go outside and see why that might be the case. Uh, if we see on this end, we got our two engines hanging out here. If we flip around, there's no engines in the other side. So what we've got to do is move these two engines over here. Uh, the first stop that you see there, it's actually the stop that's directly in front of us, roughly a little bit past that red light up there. The second stop is the one all the way on the other end of the siding. And then our last stop is a couple of the formation. If we go to map, what we'll be able to see is we're going to go all the way up roughly about here. And we're going to come all the way roughly about there. And that's going to be the gist of this. The main problem with this mission is it requires 50, it's, it's, I'm saying this wrong, it requires 1850 AP points here in order to get the gold medal. If you just play this like the instruction tell you, you might not get the 1850 gold for the gold medal. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple different things. One, we've got this wonderful guy here. What kind of side eye is that? What the heck, man? I'm telling you, you're wonderful. I am going to turn on your wiper just for you, so you don't have anything to worry about. I'm even going to turn on the one that you can't even see behind you. You're going to give me the side eye, really? The side eye, my gosh. Anyway, so this engine here is going to become our trailing engine, despite it being in the front. Because if you think about this, when we go forward or go around and come back, essentially we will have this facing the boxcars there. So what I'm going to do with this engine in particular is I'm going to flip over here and go to air brake. Make sure it's that cut out and trail. We're good there. We can exit the screen. I'm going to come back up here. Make sure our automatic handle is off and our independent brake is released. The problem I have with this game sometimes is you would think one of these handles would be turned on. But look at this brake pipe pressure. There's nothing in the cars. That's just insane, man. Um, down here, we want to make sure our engine run, gen field, and control and fuel pump are all turned off. So we're going to turn off all three of these. And for the sake of this, I'm going to turn off dynamic brakes. That won't make sense until the next episode. And back behind me, I'm going to put this on. How do I control the short hood trail? Because our short hood is facing outwards. And I'm going to turn off the radio because we don't need the radio. And with that, this engine is officially set up. I feel like I should turn on maybe a desk light or something for you. That way you don't, you're not just like horribly in the dark. There you go. You're welcome. And well, maybe this one too. There. Now you got some light. You're welcome. Anyways, out the door we go. All right, first step, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uncouple these cars. There's two ways you can do it. You can uncouple it with this coupler here, and that will cause the 250 AP point score to rise. Or we could just do this from the engine for the same benefit. Honestly, to keep some of the glitching out, I find that doing it from the engine is the best way to go. We're going to go ahead and hop on inside this engine. This engine here is going to be our lead engine. And actually, before we do... One of the other issues that I have with this game is this game has handbrakes, but yet we don't ever use them in the context of the game, and they're always released. I don't ever understand why. Like, if you're parking a train here, why don't you put your handbrakes on? You know what I mean? Even the engine handbrakes are still on, which is kind of crazy. You would think there would also be a light switch for this for that bulb there, but there isn't. Getting back into the lead engine, what we're going to do here is we're going to set our headlight control to short hood lead. And I've already forgotten to turn on the number lights in that other engine, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The radio is already on in this engine. We're going to turn on distributed power in this engine as well. And for now, we're going to put this automatic brake handle to full service and independent brake to full application. We're going to go into our air brake screen, turn on cut out to cut in, turn on independent brake to lead, save changes. And apparently with this engine, it doesn't work to have cut out. So when you have warning devices on, you do have the problem and the issue of the brake pipe pressure dropping drastically. For the front headlights, as you can see, we're going to use bright. For the back headlights, we're going to use dim. If I flip this around and flip engine, the back headlight is on. I'm not going to go check that right now. I'm just going to pop out to this other engine because I forgot to turn on my number light, and I'm going to pop right back into my lead engine. Down here in the corner, we're going to make sure all three of these on, engine run, gen field, and control fuel pump, as well as dynamic brakes, and for the sake of it, gauge lights. To get this train moving, we are going to put our reverser in reverse, turn on a bell, which I tend to forget to do, power to end one. We're going to go ahead and release the automatic brake. We don't really need to worry about any of that. We're going to release independent brake, and we're going to put throttle two. 
We're going to put two blasts of the horn. And that is more than enough for my train to get moving. And while it is moving, I'm going to go ahead and turn on some window wipers, probably to 67%. It's not going to matter now, but it's going to matter a whole lot more when I'm going in the other direction. I'm going to turn on some cab lights so we can all see what we're doing in the dark here. And I'm going to be the one that's needing the desk light and the side cab light here. Obviously, I can't see anything. Obviously, I could just, you know, go over here, open the window, pop my head out, get so wet. That would be so stupid. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to rely on my trusty co-pilot to hopefully tell me what's going on. Oh my god, I'm feeding. Good golly, why do I do such things? So unfortunately, I got the 15 AP for driving over the speed limit. So that's going to screw me over even more with this episode. It's going to kind of suck because my total has to be 1850 AP points and I'm already messed that up by 15 points. Good job. With the rain, folks, you can see how hard it is to stop. I purposely decided to stop a little bit further out. You can see kind of how hard it is to stop a train with the rain. And so this is going to create problem for us going downhill. There's some things we can do, especially the biggest issue here is wheel slip. So in the main engine, which happens to be the engine that I'm currently sitting in right now, we can now put this in forward. Uh, we can do our throttle going N1 for the time being. We can blow our two blasts of the horn, which I have a tendency of forgetting. And we can release our independent brake. We're going to roll downhill anyways, but I'm going to go ahead and go to camera three just so you can kind of see what starts to happen with the wheels there. And so the wheels will start to slip because the very front of the engine is the most likeliest part of the track to be the most wet. And then as it goes back more towards the second engine, it's going to be less wet. And then as it goes back towards the cars, it's going to be even more less wet. And so the biggest issue is trying to make sure your lead engine does not have wheel slip. Ironically, people would think the goal of wheel slip is that once you get your wheels slipping, you just slam the brakes, but it works just like a car that doesn't have AWS in it. You actually have to treat it like an old 1960s car where you have to literally pump the brakes to get your engine to stop. And so that means when the wheel slip happens and it's a rainy day like this, you actually just, just take the brakes back off and your wheels will start spinning again. Very bizarre thought process, not not very intuitive at all. One of the advantages, by the way, of being in a mission like this and being on the outside of the train is you don't have to hear this sound. The rain hitting the ceiling starts to get very loud and very annoying. So sometimes that helps and if you have to, you can turn the game sound down and you know make your life a little bit easier or else you're just gonna have to deal with the heck of, of rain sound on the top of your tin can here all the way till you get to the bottom. All right, folks, so what we're gonna try to do is we are gonna try to slam the brakes. We are at 54%. I'm trying hard not to pass this light. Uh, I'm probably going to pass the light. Is the light gonna change on me? Good golly, I made it. Thank goodness. So I didn't wanna have to go the extra 600 yards out because what's gonna happen is as soon as you pass some of these switches here, the switches are going to change. And what's important to realize here is if we look at our score system here, we are supposed to get 1850 for a gold medal. We have 945, which means if we stop at that location, that is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's 1445. And when we couple the formation, that's another 250. If you think about the uncoupling 250, right? So 15, 16, 1700. So we're going to end up being short by about 150 or so. So the best way to fix this, it's not the ideal, but you put your train in reverse and you back up, and I'm not kidding. Uh, you could go the whole way, all the way back to where you started, or you could just go a little ways, as long as you're going to pass 1850. The last time I did this, um, I got a bronze medal. I was so pissed because I got a bronze medal. I was like, what the heck, man? Why am I not getting a gold? What the heck happened here? And I realized it was because the mission didn't give you enough requirements to actually stop you. Uh, so that was not fun, and so, when I did it again, I decided to go, okay, as long as I don't pass the single, as long as I don't get that light to turn red over there, I should be good going backwards. And I have a red light behind me anyways, that's about 5,000 feet. So if I do this, this will preserve my gold medal. And that is exactly what I did. Some of you might be freaking out a little bit, wondering if there's a train on the other end, but I can guarantee you doing this here, there is no train on the tracks, so at least not in this episode. So it's actually very safe to do this and to go all the way to the other end. You can see we're already at 1035, which is great news. We do have to stop because of that, that um, single that's up ahead. 
So we do want to make sure we, you know, slam our brakes here and not go past the single here either. Let's go back to the back camera because you can see we're going to go past the single really quick. Oh my God, please don't let me go past the single. Please don't let me go past the single. Full application, please. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Wow. Just wow, 85 feet to that thing. My goodness, I stopped this good. Anyway, so especially on a rainy day, we don't want to go past this single, whatever you do, you don't want to even think about going over the bridge, but this is far enough. We should get 1850 at this point by going all the way through the light and stopping at our destination 4,000 something feet away. So I'm gonna meet you guys back at the other single in the other direction. All right, folks, we passed the single and we're about to head over to our stop to get our next 500 AP point. And you'll be able to see this once we come to a full stop here. What's going to end up happening with our AP score? We're at 1215 right now, which is perfect. Oh my god, I'm going to blow past this one too. What the heck? Come back, little single! Oh gosh. Okay, that works. Okay, 23 feet over. Thank goodness it wasn't the same deal there. But yeah, so we're at 1715 now. And all we need now is the last 250. And that will give us our 1850. In fact, we're going to probably be at 1900 something like that. So all we have to do is put this in reverse. Go ahead and go throttle one. And of course, release our independent brake and bail that off. And what I'm going to do for the sake of the cutout issue is as we go backwards, I'm gonna stop my train before I actually couple to the rail cars in about 2,000 feet. Oh my gosh, guys, there is a train in the other direction. That scared me. I thought he was coming right towards me in the track that I was on, but it turns out he was on the track next to me. Okay, I lied, there is trains here. I did not know this train was actually going to be here. Seriously, that just spooked the heck out of me, man. Folks, that train next to me is a very long train. It's still going. I'm just totally shocked that he's still moving. Anyhow, we're about 300 feet. We're actually going to stop about 100 feet or so away from this train. I'm trying to make myself get to a full stop as easily as I can here. And so one of the issues I've noticed, at least with the cutout, is if I go back inside the engine here while I come to a full stop there, we're going to go into the air brake screen. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to cut out. I'm going to leave lead in and I'm going to hit save. And so what happened with this is my train actually will no longer move, which is very interesting because my automatic brake is released, my independent brake is released, my throttle can be on throttle one, or throttle two, or throttle three, and it just, oh, never mind, it is moving. Okay, well, never mind. Well, if you don't have rail cars, your train will actually move. Well, I, I failed that one. Never mind. Well, as I was saying, all you have to do is put this thing on cut out and then move forward. I am going so fast. Why do I have to go so fast like that? Bump up against that rail card, and the mission officially is over. We're going to put our brakes on so we don't move. And we could just go back in and change it to cut in, but it wants us to wait for a moment. And that is basically the end of the mission. So as usual, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. You can see we've got 1995 total AP score. We're about over by, by about roughly a thousand but i would rather be over by a thousand than under because the thing messed up so as usual feel free to hit me up for the next part of this which is going to be part four going from where we just coupled all the way to essentially where we coupled in yoder all the way down to cumberland station itself or cumberland yard we actually have to go to deep cumberland yard so that's coming up in the next video Stay tuned, folks, and thank you again. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye. All right, folks, we've made it to the Sand Patch Summit. It's kind of hard to see out this window, but if I go outside to the outside camera, you can definitely see we're on the summit here. We're at a 1.2% grade. I'm still maintaining about 21 miles an hour. My amperes are doing okay at 62, 63. And we got, a, we got our VIA location coming up in 2,000 feet, but our red light over there is at 4,000 feet. We don't care about the speed over there because we're already going way below that. That was a big giant lightning bolt right there. 